Hello, it's Who's the Doom. Now, a couple months back, there was a discussion about um, as GW continues to re-engage with the community, what are the new steps or new initiatives that we would like to see them do? Now, at the time, I had two suggestions. One was the relaunch of the Outrider program. The second was the relaunch of uh, the Skulls kind of customer reward program. Now, just recently, I was... Um, reading an article on a website about a new uh, Skulls program that um, new Warhammer stores are promoting. And it's basically um, you complete, uh, you get like a sticker per purchase. I assume it's about $25. That's what the, the old price point always was, but it doesn't really actually say on, on this uh, new program uh, the information we have thus far. But basically you complete... Uh, uh, t 10 skulls and then you get a Terminator Chaplain exclusive model. I love exclusive models uh, as a collector so it's tempting but I'm not really sure if the price point is necessarily that great right if it's if it's really worth the investment to necessarily get the model um, how much will it be on the secondary market because I'm sure you're gonna see a few of them on eBay and so on and so forth. Um, Last November, there was another similar program launched in Europe, um, and I was, you know, both of these programs, I think, look promising. The one in Europe last year, it never came to North America that I'm aware of, and uh, basically the exact same thing, you spend 25 euros and you get a sticker, and then depending on how many stickers you get, or it basically tracks how much you're spending. Um, you then get certain rewards. So for 150 euros, you get free dice, at 300 euros you get a free patch or pin and at 400 euros you get a free t-shirt um i have warhammer t-shirts i love warhammer t-shirts again though i'm not really sure if i'm going to spend 400 euros to get a t-shirt or 300 to get a free pin now you, you get other product with it but my point is is how much of an incentive of this is, are these programs to really go and buy at games workshop as opposed to uh, buying GW products at a different retailer. I think it's it's a really difficult kind of balance to kind of maintain. And if you were to offer me the shirt for 400 euros, I don't care how much of a GW fanatic I am, I'm probably not going to buy it. Um, and so, you know, these rewards, the programs as they currently exist, seem to be for people that are already buying Games Workshop products uh, from Games Workshop. And I'm just not really sure if that's really a, much of a customer loyalty program. In other words, you're probably already going to spend the money at Games Workshop anyways. You're just getting a couple extra uh, extra little things here and there anyways. Buying from Games Workshop, I think, is a increasingly kind of a complicated uh, issue because there are a lot of retailers that do offer 20% off. Um, I've bought most of my collection and it's fairly extensive directly from games workshop mostly because i didn't know there was any other alternative um, there are no retailers where i was in in new england and in canada that offered that type of discount but i know other gamers do have uh, those options and so it's really difficult to buy at full price if you know you can get something at 20 or even more off most recently, I've actually been buying for, from these other retailers as well, um, because you can make orders, um, you know, through email or whatnot. And it's it's really difficult now to kind of go back and pay full price if well, what we what kind of call full price now uh, is kind of like the the price retail that doesn't have the discount. But it's difficult to make that investment when you know you can save money. Now. There are two Games Workshop stores um, within, you know, relatively easy commute. And there was a new store back in Maine when I was living in New Hampshire. And again, you know, I, I, I went down to the store. I met the guy and uh, the, the store managers here uh, seem really nice as well. It's just it's really difficult to, again, make those purchases at the Games Workshop store when you know you could save money elsewhere. Um, and you kind of put in a position of being a little bit of a hypocrite because if you're playing at the store, and a lot of people do play at the stores, um, you know, how can you make use of those resources and not support the store directly? I mean, especially if they know you're buying product 
uh, somewhere else you keep showing up with brand new kits and it's like no he's clearly not buying those from me um so it's you know and gw puts a lot of pressure on the staff to increase sales and i know they have high expectations for their stores so it, it's a, a kind of a it's kind of like a kind of a difficult situation uh because i the one hand i want to uh support the, the company and i want to um support the, those local stores um at the same time it's so tempting just to save the money uh so the old skulls program the one i was referring to um i never actually did pass in my card but you can see it here so i think it was the same deal i think you paid 25 bucks or something um and you got a sticker i think this was like an, a mail order exclusive at the time but uh you know, it, it it was kind of an interesting program because it um, it offered really amazing rewards. But again, it's a huge investment uh, in order to get them. Um, if you're if it's anything close, it may have been fifteen dollars per sticker. But regardless, um, the cards only go up to fifty, so you need quite a bit. Um, you know, at fifty car at at twenty five stickers, you could get like a codex. Or something like that. At 15, it's like a keychain. Uh, once you get a beyond one card, then you get some really beautiful rewards, um, some castles, and some some of the bigger kits. The biggest prize at 300 uh, skulls was the Bane Blade. Now, the Bane Blade at the time was, you know, immensely powerful. Probably far more powerful in terms of the in terms of the game than even the current Bane Blade. And at the time, the Bane Blade was like the warlord, a, a titan of its era. It was, uh, I think, the second most expensive kit that, that Games Workshop produced, or produced by uh, Forge World, of course, at the time. Um, it wasn't the armor cast. I think it was just like the first version of the For Forge World uh, Bane Blade. But again, quite uh, quite an investment to get those um, to to get those rewards even though they're really great rewards so what i would like to see in a customer reward program if, if gw were to come to me and say hooves how would you design a customer reward program i would probably say something like the old skulls required a lot of investment but i know that gw wants their stores to be successful um, and i know that they are probably concerned with the fact that they're uh, largely being undercut by a lot of the retailers. Um, I would argue that it should be both in-store and online, but I think they need to offer seriously uh, reward systems that are equivalent to a 20% reduction. In other words, you put in X number of investment in dollars and you get 20% additional rewards. That would be a way for them to... Um, to match what a lot of the independent retailers are doing by undercutting their product by 20, 20 or more percent. So I think that that would be something that uh, would be a good way to encourage people to buy things from their local stores and to buy from GW directly. So uh, providing accumulative rewards um, could be really beneficial and it's, it's something that the old programs never really did. But I think they need to offer a range of product um, so the Bane Blade was great but if you're playing Eldar or you're playing Orcs it's not really much of an incentive so if they did something like um, if they kept with the 20% ratio if you spent $425 at Games Workshop um, and again they could kind of track this so it's $425 uh, cumulatively um, you could get an $85 or basically a start collecting box of your choice for free. Now, I think that would be something that um, would be great. And that's a little bit of a more immediate gratification reward system. The old Skulls program required some heavy dedication in order to get those massive rewards. But they could do something like that as well if they really wanted to go further. Um, so if they wanted to match that type of system, they could provide um, something like if you spent 3000 you get you know, one of the top premier Forge World kits. Um, I think that would be something, 3000 is a big investment, but over a couple of years, if the program were supported long term, 
I don't think that would be that uh, unusual for people to spend, um, you know, that quantity of money over, over, over a number of years in the hobby. Um, but to get those type of rewards, Forge World makes a lot of its money because it's so exclusive because you can't buy it uh, at most independent retailers. So the the benefit of offering those type of rewards, I think, was really real. And I think that they could do something like that that would really uh, draw people back. It would uh, reward those that continue to buy from GW directly, but it would probably draw some of the other people that are buying uh, from these other retailers. Now, I'm not really sure if it would neg negatively impact uh, you know, a lot of these other retailers because they're saving cash as opposed to just getting more product. And I'm not really sure what people would rather want. Um, me personally, if I save money, I'd probably just buy more product. Uh, but, you know, some other people would probably just rather have the money. Um, and, and that is kind of a difference between these pro uh, different programs. But it would probably, a program as, as I've described would probably ne negatively impact the retailers that are not currently... Uh, not currently providing product at a discount, but I'm not. I, I don't know if, if that's kind of a mi minority at this point. If most product, if most retailers are offering a 20% discount, I'm really curious to see uh, how many people do or do not have these uh, retailers that do provide the discounts. So that's kind of my my thought on what I would like to see from a reward program and kind of a, just a very brief review of the current programs as they exist they're they're nice I love exclusive models I like exclusive t-shirts I'm just they're high investment for very low reward so they're they're the type of program that it's great if you're already continuing to buy from games workshop um, but if you're buying GW products from other retailers there's just not much of an incentive to to go back and to buy. Uh, from directly from Games Workshop, and I, I think that a program like this could be really beneficial both to to gamers but also to the company. That's just my thoughts. Anyway, have a good one.